Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. It is Tuesday morning, and that means we have the one and only Lumberjack Landlord with us. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing awesome, Mike. It's Tuesday. I'm so happy to be here. It's the end of summer. That's here right. In- the last day yeah. of August. Last day of August. So, you know, we're just, uh, we had an extremely productive summer, got a lot of the outdoor stuff done. Of course, not as much as we wanted to, as always. Yeah. Um, but yeah, getting ready for, uh, getting ready to batten down the hatches right. for winter. Yeah. How much snow do you get where you're at? Um, I think last year, I think we got about between 80 and hundred inches last year. <laughs> yeah. We get a lot of snow. Yeah. No, yeah. thanks. I'm out. Yeah, the, the worst than the snow though, is usually in January or February, we get uh, the, the, the patterns change and mm. we get the, we get the Saskatchewan cold mm. and uh, holy crap, that's cold. Like we get, <laughs> I think it was three years ago we had some where it was like minus 30 wind chill every day for like a week and a half. And that was, yeah, that's not good. No, that was frozen. Well, so here's the cool thing out of all of my properties, I only had two frozen pipes. So I'm oh. like doing something right. Yeah, so go. we fixed those. And so now we, now we should be good for that okay. a naughtiness, but naughtiness. Yeah. Well, Hey, something I want to do with you today is yeah, I, I, I'm always trying to look ahead. Right. And I'm trying to, when, when in doubt, I'm trying to help people see, the future by using data in the past, right? Mm-hmm. I don't like feelings or, you know, I, I feel housing is expensive or, you know, someone told me this or told me that, right? I, I wanted, I want to look at math, right? Mm-hmm. So what I wanted to do here is I wanted to take that 50 year data that you and I looked at, I don't know, a month ago. Yep. And I wanted to answer a question. I want to say, okay, if we repeat the patterns of the last five years or 50 years, excuse me, five decades, what would housing look like in 2029? What would incomes look like in 2029? And then because we don't know interest rates, I wanted to slap in variables from 3% all the way to seven. Yep. And um, <clears throat> cause I want to see where, when housing gets unaffordable, right? Because I believe we're going to repeat the seventies, which means rising rates. And, you know, if we have all these things going on, you know, housing could become unaffordable. So that's the question I have. Yeah, I think I think it's a great exercise. I think because you know what we look at is you know those who don't understand history are doomed to repeat it, mm-hmm. and everything is cyclical. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> is it a generational cycle? Mm-hmm. Is it a decade cycle? Is it a seven year cycle? Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think it's interesting, you know, pulling those pieces apart and then what contributed to those cycles. Mm-hmm. So I think it's always interesting to look at that. I think it's also you know where there are uh, there's a whole generation of borrowers that has no concept of a mortgage in the fives. Exactly. That's shocking right? and true, right? In the fives, Mike. Yeah, no, I know. And if it's... we get back to 70s numbers, we're talking 7, 8, 9, 10, 11%, 12%. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which obviously is going to impact things. So yeah, look forward to the exercise. Let's do it to it. Yeah, so let's bring it up again. That was kind of the question. Does housing get mm-hmm. unaffordable given everything? So let me share this with you. And I'm going to walk you through just how my brain worked, how I pieced this together. Because I think jumping to the answer is um, not helpful. I wanted to kind of show how I got here. You got to show your math, right? You got to show the math. So first. Almost as common core. Yeah. Yeah. First thing I had to ask is, have we ever had a decade where rates were rising and it caused falling prices? Why is that important? Well, as I've said earlier, my main thesis is rates are going to rise this decade. Will they Mm -hmm. rise this year? Who knows? But they're going to be higher 2029 than they are today. I feel that's a relatively safe, I don't know, guess. Let's just call it what it is. It's a complete guess, but I think it's a safe guess. Do you? Yeah, I think so. So uh, would it, would it shock you to realize that the last 40 years interest rates are lower at the end of the period than the beginning? Meaning 80 versus 89, 90 versus uh, 99, 2000 versus 2000. We've had 40 years of falling rates. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, it does. It doesn't surprise me only because this is one of the things that we actually watch is over the trend of time, right? Which is mm-hmm. not catching a picture of six months or a month. Right. Like I, I am mortified to see the stupidity of the clickbait headlines mm-hmm. that we're going to be seeing in the next four months. Right. Like it is going to be super, super stupid. Yeah. So, but yeah, so I, so, so, I, so we, yes, I agree. So we had one decade. It yep. was the seventies. And that's why I keep saying, okay. uh, I see the seventies coming uh, where interest rates were up at the end of the decade than the beginning. And they started the decade at 8.5. They 
They end the decade at 11.2. That's a 31% jump in 10 years. Yeah. But oh, by the way, just because it's here, did, look at what housing did. We had rising, we had rising rates and housing doubled. How can that be possible? Mike, because if rates go up, uh, housing has to crash. Wages. Wages, exactly. <laughs> wages, people. I don't but, but Mike, let's put everything in a vacuum. Hey, yeah. listen, you know one thing about a vacuum? Everything in a vacuum sucks. <laughs> it just it's it's not it's not the way to do any equation. It's just like we always talk about. There's knobs and levers. Yeah. There's incomes. I mean, how many companies only go and report revenue? None. Zero. None. It's an irrelevant number unless you have the complete picture. So again, I want to say it again. We have one decade over the last 50 years where rates went up. They went up 30, almost 32% and housing doubled. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's, that's, most people would not guess that, right? Because they listen to everybody that says rising rates going to kill housing. Okay. All right. So question number two, uh, this again is not individual income. This has always been family of four, right? Uh, it may start in the 70s as a single income, but certainly by the 80s, 90s, and after, it's, it's dual income. Uh, but again, what was the average wage growth over decades, each 10 years? So here we go. Mm -hmm. The 70s, wages went up 88%. 80s, up 63%. 90s, uh, 36%. 2000s, 25%. And in the, the, the decade just passed, up 40, almost 42%. Mm -hmm. So the lowest wages went up was 25% and the highest was 88%. And oh, by mm -hmm. the way, it happened to be that decade where we had rising rates and uh, wage inflation, which I think is, is coming. Yeah. So that's interesting, right? H housing, okay. housing prices by themselves are almost irrelevant. So that's what this is, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's interesting. Probably people wouldn't probably expect that. So, okay. All right. Now I'm trying to figure out, okay, given 50 years of history, five decades, if we take the average of the five decades and we multiply it by the base of 2020, what does 2029 income look like? Yep. Right? So again, the average <laughs> over the five decades is 51%. The start of the decade was 78,500. If you take this number times that, you get a 2029 median income of 118. Now, my experience, people are going to lose their mind and say, nobody can make 120 grand a year. What are you talking about? Blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, guys, do the freaking math. <laughs> that's two That's two people working right. full time, making 20, a year. That's right. yeah, $28 mm -hmm. and 48 cents an hour. Do you think that people could be making 28, $28.50 an hour? Median, not, not first-time jobs. That's jobs. median, of it's course. It's median jobs, absolutely. The, the bigger issue that we, are, you know, that what, absolutely kills me in all of these other people's stupid pretty graphs mm -hmm. is and it just shows that you know that uh, that's that form far trump substance mm -hmm. is you look at these things and they're counting on unincome unincome yeah. unincome as a landlord the number of units that i have that count on a sole income one income is less than eight percent yeah. I actually looked at my portfolio. Um, and if you take out the section eight housing, which does seem to be dominated by single incomes. Uh, yeah. It's less than 5%. Right. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. And again, people are going to see this 118 and lose their mind. Yes, Folks, this is family yep. of four likely to incomes. It's $28 an hour and it's median income. It's not your first job. That's right. Right. That's so right. I don't know. People are going to lose their mind. But totally and, and again, it's eight years from now. It's eight years from now. So correct. Anyways, and we and we know that we're heading most. I mean, oh, wages are going up. No question. Great, Mike. They already have. Oh, they're, they're not done. crazy. No, I've talked to a bunch of restaurant owners, and he's like, yeah, he's like, you know, we used to, you know, waitresses and how they would pay them. Completely different now. Yeah. He's like, I pay them an hourly rate plus tips they yeah. get. He goes, and my, and, and again, I'm talking to people that are, you know, these are people that were paid obviously below minimum wage because that's what you do with waitresses, right? Right. Like that it's like a, the way they do the shares, but he's like, they're all well over minimum wage now. Yep. And he goes, and then on top of that tips, he goes, they're making crazy money. He's like, I'm the one with all the compressed margin. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Pretty crazy. Yeah. So now I wanted to ask, because again, I believe housing is a leveraged business. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. not a cash business. Yep. Um, I was surprised by this one because, again, it's just a question I had and I didn't know the answer. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Have wages ever outpaced housing growth? Because I would expect the answer to be no, right? You make an extra thousand bucks, you lose half the taxes, you know, the other half goes somewhere else. And maybe, you know, a tenth of it goes to your housing costs. Yeah. But lo and behold, we did have one decade. Yeah. The 90s. Yep. Where housing went up 27%, but incomes went up 26. Interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that. So yep. again, it can happen, uh, but it's unusual, right? Is what this says. So usually, usually housing prices go up more than incomes because again, it's levered, right? It's it's nine to one. It's eight, eight, you know, it's four to whatever it is. It's just Correct. it's yeah, it's five, it's so it's five to one, or right? Five to so one. Yeah, yeah. What um do you what correlation um, if any, do you draw off of the fact that this really was you know, some hangover of major legislation changes that caused a bunch of uh, angst in the market mm -hmm. and then years for it to essentially work through. I mean, are you, is there any correlation yeah, there in your model? The, the beauty that I, I think you would see that if you looked at single years. Yeah. But I think when you, when you look at a full decade, it kind of yep. washes the noise away. Okay. Right. I can't think of anything in housing that had a decade of impact. Um, even the greatest run up, right, was really kind of 03 to 06. And then the, yes. right? So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and the other, yeah, we'll get, we'll get into all that. So then what could 2029 median house price look like? Again, kind of the same math as wages, right? You want to take a guess? Yeah, I'm going to guess what are, uh, we're basing the median now at what, 363? No, I used 2020 numbers, which was 270. If 270. Sir. So I would guess 460. Okay, here we go. Four, so again, 56% average, 270, 423. And again, what this really tells me, because you're right, 350, whatever is the 21 number. Mm -hmm. uh, we've actually front loaded the decade. That's what yeah, that really so. tells me. Yep. But, in, in, you know, Again, I think we have. I think we front loaded the decade. I think a lot of that was earned up front. But again, the median in 2029, again, given 50 years or five decades, the median is going to be 423, almost 424. Yeah. <clears throat> I think, and, so, I, so, I mean, this is the math, right? These just are math. not feelings. No. Nope. Um, and so what I like about this, too, is like what we talked about, which was the slowdown. So admittedly, like the first six months of this year, you saw price appreciation of what, like 23 point something percent? Oh, just nutty. Yeah. I think, I think right. Case Shiller just came out today. And for 20 cities, the, the Case Shiller 20 is 18 and a half. Right. And so maybe at the end of the year, we're not at eight, you know, we finished the year maybe at 22, right? Yeah, exactly. We're, we or front loaded. We right. front loaded the decade, let alone the year. Right. Um, and, th and then yeah. next year, we're much more, you know, we might, it, it's going to be, It'll Every be YouTube channel is going to be the six. crash. Yeah. Right, exactly. Every channel is going to be the crash, but we're going to be off eight or, or you know, we're going to be you know only positive five or six normal, but because everybody's looking for this rocket ship growth. Yeah. You know, like, like we talked about too. Remember when people were flipping in six and seven? Yeah. We are not going to repeat. This is what I hope people take from this is we can't fundamentally repeat what we saw in 21. Right. Otherwise this all breaks and the system crashes. Agreed. Right. But it can it can support where we're at. It's just not a lot left. Um, but I, the biggest question is next. This is this because, again, my whole idea was, OK, let me figure out incomes. Let me figure out price. Mm -hmm. And then they slap in various interest rates because I want to know where housing gets unaffordable. And I'm using housing unaffordable based on the last five decades. And again, I'm using what's called a front end ratio that lenders use. It's incomes mm -hmm. and mortgage payment. It doesn't include uh, in uh, taxes and, and you know insurance all it's a front end ratio because again I don't know the average insurance rates I don't know this I don't know that uh, but if I can do apples to apples across 50 years I can at least have an informed opinion and that's going to be a majority of your cost largely speaking oh right? yeah largely speaking right so again how unaffordable is housing in 2029 assuming an income of 118 for a family of four and a housing price of 423 by various interest rates. So the only thing that changed across these five columns is the interest rate went from three to four to five to six to seven. And where we're looking here is payment percent of gross. That's the front end ratio. We are remarkably affordable at 16%, Agreed. right? Agreed. Uh, the front end ratio, again, talking to mortgage lenders, anything below 30 is safe, Yep. right? That's like, yep. you know, then they go do a deeper dive and do the back end ratio. But you can see, and this shocked the hell out of me, interest rates all the way up to 7%, mm -hmm. you're still below 
<clears throat> right? Yeah. So we yeah. went up 400 basis points and we're still below. It's um, yeah. pretty, pretty crazy. So actually, you know what? Something I haven't done yet, but let's do it right now together uh, is when does housing get unaffordable? Forgive me, I need to shut this down. Oh, I can't do that, damn it. Because I don't have the spreadsheet. up. Maybe we'll do it in another video. No. Yeah, we'll do another video. Because I think, that's a, I think that's a great model because what's really interesting though, Mike, is if you look at what the government's talking about and trying to do, mm -hmm. They, the only thing that is unaffordable in your projections mm -hmm. is the down payment. Yeah. The down payment becomes a problem. Yes. You know, 35% that becomes a problem. So absolutely. if the answer to that is $17,500 from bank of America, you know, $18,000 is what the government's talking about. Mm -hmm. And you can combine, you can combine them. Yeah. Well, there's your $35,000 down. There's $35,000 to eliminate yeah. any of the risk. And all you have to do is basically credit qualify. Yeah. Well, again, let's not forget what you did house hacking. Again, even if it's 423 of, of, of three and a half percent, even do 5% for easy math, that's $22,000. That's right. Well, Mike, and here's one of the biggest things that we're doing with our students now is it's not this on fire market anymore everywhere mm -hmm. where yeah. every deal is over ask and under contract oh. in 24 hours. Slow down is real. So now the opportunity is back to little tricks that we were doing a year and two and three years ago or 10 years ago, which was you pay my closing costs. Yeah, exactly. And so we just did that where my student just actually finished the acquisition of their property and they were eight grand out of pocket. There you go. Four unit, $300,000 property. They were eight grand out of pocket. Fourplex house hack. That's the fourplex way to get house hack. Four, fourplex house hack, eight grand out of pocket. That's the way to do it for $300,000 purchase. That's right. Oh, so exciting. Eight grand out of pocket. And that was with no seller carry. That was with nothing funky. That was purely... Hey, we can agree to this price. I just want you to pick up all the closing costs and FHA and conventional both allow for up to three and a half percent of those closing costs to be covered mm. um, by the seller. And so they, in, in lieu of a discount, mm. we'll just take them paying all those costs because then that means we have to show up with that much less to the table. It was a little over eight grand. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, again, so the people that are saying housing is going to be unaffordable or is unaffordable aren't doing the math. They are looking at charts and going, that peak is higher than that peak. And again, much of the country, we're 41% above 06 peaks now. But again, right. remember, interest rate in 06 was 6.41%. Interest rate today is under three. That's the right. payment is lower today, even with a higher price. Even with the higher price and the higher taxes and the higher insurance. Yeah. I've gone that next level and looking at all of my deals. Yeah, It's still strange. higher then than it was now. Yeah. Pretty crazy. So again, housing 2029, again, lots of assumptions, complete guess. It is based on math. If you look at wages, you look at price, uh, and then you look at interest rates from three to 7%, it's still, frankly, remarkably affordable. And I did look yesterday, uh, it, even at 7%, I think it was 23%, we go back to 1992 pricing. Yeah. Uh, 1992, I think was pretty affordable. Just based on numbers, not based on feelings. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, and that's the thing is that it's um, if people, if people wonder where like people like yourself, people like me become emboldened in pushing into a market, mm -hmm. it's because it's not based on how we feel. No, about it's numbers. It's just, it's math. It's you argue with four plus four equals eight. Argue with that all you want. You're yeah. wrong. Yeah. If you don't agree that it's eight, you're wrong. Yeah, I, I want to take feelings out of it. Anytime I've ever got in trouble trading, it's because of feelings. I feel this. I feel right. that. Yep. Uh, that's why my course is all about focus and daily disciplines and buy the highest yield. I I don't care totally. if it's twenty units or a little one bedroom bath. I'm going to buy the best. You know, the best yield. That simple. So every time, every every single time. <laughs> so how can people follow you and be part of your world? Lumberjacklandlord.com, Lumberjacklandlord on YouTube. And we will be doing, at least for the for the next month, we will be doing regular uh, live streams at 1130 Eastern time on Sundays. Ooh. We want to make sure that people get their 11 a.m. financial times news from you. There you go. And that after they've gotten a little bit of a warm up from Mike, 
that they shoot on over and that they have some fun with us at 1130. And we'll probably do them for about an hour or until yeah. I can keep my head up off my desk. Yeah, you've got it. To, you've, I, I would I would strongly recommend setting a time limit. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, it just gets out of hand and you're wrecked the entire the good, day. The good news is, is I did three hours and the last one was two. And so this one, I got a good shot of it being one. Yeah, so. there you go. Well, thanks, buddy. Thanks for uh, putting up with me. Take thanks, care. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm.